Our sermon text today is part of the Gospel reading. Then Jesus said to them, Suppose you have a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread. A friend of mine on a journey has come to me. I have nothing to offer him. And suppose the one inside answers, Don't bother me. The door is already locked, and my children are and I are in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not give up, get up and give you the bread because of friendship, yet because of your shameless audacity, he will surely get up and give you as much as you need. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Pride often gets in our way, doesn't it? Pride gets in between us and our relationships with each other. It certainly gets in between us and God. There are many times in our lives when we say things like, I don't need God to forgive me because I can take care of it myself. I don't need God's help in this situation because I can take care of it myself. More often than not, I'm sure we say with one another, I don't need to ask that person's forgiveness because I would have to then humble myself to do so. I don't need to ask that person's forgiveness. It would just be better if we never spoke again. I don't need to help you because then I would have to be humble. Pride gets in the way. And if you're like me, it gets in the way more often than not. There's a, a story that comes to mind as I think of pride getting away, and even now, as I was talking with Hannah earlier this week, it's still kind of embarrassing, and one that we didn't really want to share, but I think I will. It's about five years ago, we were moving to seminary from Michigan. Uh, she was finishing her internship. Uh, I just finished it, actually, and Rhett had just been born, so it wasn't quite five years, I guess it was four, a little over four. And, uh, we had moved uh, to St. Louis. We'd been saving. We knew we were going to move, so we had been saving. We had a good amount of savings, but we had a little more expenses than we expected. Red had a difficult birth. Um, he was in the hospital for a few weeks longer than we expected him to be. That ate into our savings. It took Hannah and I longer to find uh, employment than we expected. That ate into our savings. And I remember uh, a couple of months, it must have been three, uh, maybe four, uh, four months later, we finally found work. And uh, we still had some money in our savings, but not a lot. And we, uh, we decided we'd go out and celebrate her new job. And so we, we knew we couldn't go out to anything that was real too expensive. We, we knew we probably shouldn't go anywhere where we'd have to sit down and pay a tip. So then we'd go to a uh, fast food. So we went to the mall food court. And uh, we got up to it, we ordered our food, and we handed our debit card, and it was declined. And I thought, well, that shouldn't be. I know I at least have $100 or something, right? I've got something somewhere. So I went and I checked the ATM. And sure enough, the account was empty. Well, there must have been a man who was watching us the whole time, because he came up right behind me. He must have seen the embarrassment on my face and uh, my hurt pride, because he offered me Food. He said, I'll pay for your meal. Go up, order what you want, I'll cover it. Well, I don't know if God sent that man to feed me and my family, but if God did, I let my pride get in the way. Because you know what I told him. I said, I don't need your help. It's okay. We have food at home. We'll go. We'll eat. We're getting a paycheck at the end of the week. We'll be fine. And we did. We went home. We ate. We got paid at the end of the week. We were fine. Uh, I don't remember what we ate. I know it wasn't all that great, but it probably wasn't any better than fast food anyway. So, uh, But the point is, my pride got in the way. My pride kept me from accepting this man's generosity and his love. And if God was indeed the one who sent them there to feed my family, my pride kept me from accepting God's generosity and love. Just like in that situation, it is so difficult for us to be humble and shameless and prideless, especially with one another, but even before God. Our pride gets in the way so often. 
At seminary, there were a group of students, and I'm sure Pastor Bullhagen knows this pretty well, that there are students who like to compete with one another, and their pride gets in the way. They want to know more than one another. Even in high school, even in our daily lives, we want to know more than another person. If we can, if we can trump someone and show them that we're smarter than them, then we get to puff out our chest and be just a little bit happier about ourselves. We can look a little bit better than that person. We want to be better than them. There are people I'm sure you work with, or people, people on your street, your neighbors, who you see their yards, and you think, I want my yard to be better than theirs. I want my neighbor at my work. I want to be better than him. I want to do a better job. I want the, the bigger raise. I want to be better than other people. Our pride tells us that we, we are too good to take people's help or advice, just like me in that situation. Or some of us here, who we see people who have been doing the same thing longer than we have, and we say, I'm too good to ask them for help. We're even too prideful to ask one another for forgiveness. We're too prideful to offer forgiveness to one another. Why should I forgive them? They offended me. Or why should I ask for forgiveness? They hurt my feelings. More often than not, our pride gets in the way and we're too prideful to accept the generosity and the love of others. Well, in our parable today, that's really what it's all about. Our parable begins with Jesus offering us a prayer. It's, it's the Lord's Prayer. It's a little bit different than what we normally pray in church. It's missing a couple of things. And that's because Jesus is preaching it and teaching it at a different time. If you think about Matthew's Gospel, which is where we get our Lord's Prayer that we use in liturgy, he's preaching and teaching that during the Sermon on the Mount. And he's teaching and preaching about uh, confidence and, and not being like the hypocrites and not being like the Gentiles. Uh, but saying the right thing and speaking to God and not to other people. And here it's kind of the same way, but it's a little bit different. It focuses more on our pride. He says we should be shameless and confident when we go to God in prayer. So he offers us this parable as, a, as an example. There's a man, he has a friend we over for dinner. Or not for dinner, but for traveling, and he's staying at the man's house. So he goes to his neighbor's house, and he asks for three loaves of bread. By the way, it's at midnight. Well, that parable doesn't really sound like something we would do, does it? We rarely go to each other's homes to ask for a cup of sugar during the day, or a stick of butter during the day, let alone at midnight for three loaves of bread and then tie them an entire meal. So let's think about it this way. You have a friend who calls. They're going to Disney World. And they've called you to either pick them up from the airport, to give them a place to stay, or to spend a day with them either in the park or here at your home or at the beach or something. So, you know that you have to work that day. And so you go to work. And you say, boss, I need this day off. My friend needs me to either pick them up from the airport, give them a place to stay, or spend the day with them. I need that time off. And your boss says, no. No, I can't give you that time off. You were supposed to submit the request six months ago. You don't get the time off. But then your boss tells you, he says, he, see, he hears the shamelessness in your begging. He hears the pridelessness in your asking. And he sees your dire situation, and he says, yes, I'll cover your ship. That's what our parable's about. It's how in our situation where, where we go and we normally ask for help, and we normally expect to hear the answer, no, God sees the pridelessness in our prayer. He sees the confidence in our prayer. He sees the shamelessness in our prayer. And he says, yes. Jesus wants to know that when we pray to God, we should use that same shameless audacity that we would use with our boss or with a friend. 
And aren't we shameless and prideless before God in the first place, or shouldn't we be? We believe and we will confess that God created all things in heaven and on earth. And we believe and we confess that when God created all those things and He created Adam and Eve, He placed them naked and vulnerable in the garden. And isn't that how we stand before God, naked and vulnerable? Like a naked infant in the arms of a father or a mother. That father or mother knows everything that child needs. That, that infant is completely vulnerable before that parent. And that parent provides. The parent knows what the child needs before the child even cries. That's how we are with God. We are naked and vulnerable before Him. He knows what we need before we even ask. Therefore, we can be prideless and we can be shameless and we can ask Him with complete boldness and complete confidence. We have no choice but to lay our pride aside with God and to be shameless. He knows what we're like. When we confess in our confession that, that uh, uh, we pray that, we, um, that God will forgive us of our sins by what we have done and by what we have left undone, we, we, we are confessing that God already knows what we have done. We don't even have to say what it is that we've done. He knows. But when we let our pride get in the way and we say, God doesn't need to know about that sin, I don't need to confess my sins because if I sweep it under the rug, no one will ever find out that our pride gets in the way. It gets in the way between us and Christ. And we lose out on God's generosity and His love. Just like I missed out with that man who offered the meal. But when we stand before God and we stand before Him, shameless and vulnerable. We see Christ on the cross and we receive the forgiveness of sins. We have an opportunity to lay down everything at His feet. Everything. There is nothing that you have done that God will not forgive when you lay it shameless and prideless and vulnerable at His feet. God sees our needs and He provides for them. If you're struggling in your life in any way, you can pray boldly and confidently for God to provide for you in that situation. And you may not win the lottery, but He will send someone with a debit card or credit card to buy your meal. God is generous with His gifts. He knows our needs. He provides for them. We let it all hang out in front of God, and He cares for us. When we pray that phrase, give us a stay, our daily bread, that's an all-encompassing prayer. Asking God to provide for every daily need. It's asking God to provide needs for the future, both physical and spiritual. It's asking God to forgive our sins and bring us to eternal life. And God responds with generosity and love. He was generous with us with Christ. He gave up His one and only Son. He let His Son be crucified for you and for me. And He forgave our sins. He loves us through Christ. And look what Christ was. Christ was shameless, humble, and prideless. As Philippians 2 says, He was, he was humble enough to even die. He was prideless enough to even die on a cross the most humiliating death you could experience in the ancient world. He was prideless with us. And here's the best part. God was prideless with you, and He loves you. And you get to share that love pridelessly and shamelessly with each other. We get to forgive each other. Isn't that wonderful? There are people in here that you have hurt and that have hurt you, people in your families, people at work, and you get to forgive them. It's not easy. But with the power of the Holy Spirit working in your lives, that's what you get to do. You get to love them. You get to help them. If you're sitting in here today and you're in want and in need, there is someone that God has placed here to help you. There is someone that God has placed here to care for you. We are the body of Christ. We've been talking about that in our, in our uh, Bible study on Ephesians, that we are the body of Christ. We are all connected with one another. 
and that if we separate from one another, that body cannot stand. So we forgive each other, we love each other. We even get to help and seek the people here in St. Cloud. We see them vulnerable and naked before us. We see them and we get to clothe them in the love of Christ. By simply helping out with the food pantry or with a place for grace. Or by bringing your donations here and dropping them off in the bin. You get to feed the people here at St. Cloud who are vulnerable and naked. You have opportunities each and every day to witness to them. To share God's generous love with you. His pride with you. And you get to love them as God has loved you. And that's an amazing, amazing thing. So today I ask that we, we go before God confident and bold and shameless and prideless and pray to our Father who generously listens to our prayers and provides for us as a loving Father provides for His dear, loving, naked, vulnerable children. Amen. And now may the peace of God who surpasses our human understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus now and forever. Amen.